These wizards didn't spend 30 minutes in a Naruto flashback theorizing about what spells to use. They just did it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the source of my frustration. It is no, it is literally that. Skill issues. God damn it. When you need a thesaurus to be able to cast a spell, then you know that you're doing it right. But first, let's get into this video here. This is the state of wizard games. I promise to check this out from uh, Discord, so let's give it a look. There were four types of kids in my school growing up. Kids obsessed with dinosaurs, kids obsessed with sports, kids obsessed with the Hunger Games, and kids obsessed with Harry Potter. I was obsessed with having no friends. And also Harry Potter, I guess. When I first saw the Dumbledore versus Voldemort fight at the end of the Order of the Phoenix, my family had to take me to a hospital because I lost consciousness after all the blood in my brain rushed straight to my penis. I wonder if there's a medical term for that. What the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit, there is. Both of them start by shooting the same boring laser beam that we see with every other fight in this series, but Voldemort quickly re- I need to see a description of the thing that he just searched for. Privatism is a prolonged erection of the pe- Ah, uh, this is a fantastic way of starting a stream, isn't it? Welcome, everybody. Both of them start by shooting the same boring laser beam that we see with every other fight in this series, but Voldemort quickly realizes that the killing curse alone will not be enough to win, so he's forced to get creative. The motherfucker breathes fire and then warps it into a giant lava snake which lunges at Dumbledore, who absorbs the flames and redirects them right back. Then before you even have time to comprehend what just happened, Dumbledore says... And bam, he's waterbending the fountain to trap Voldemort. This is what a wizard battle is all about. Two genius sorcerers creatively using everything at their disposal to overpower the other. Seeing this fight was the single greatest thing to ever happen to my 10 year old self and I have been chasing that high via wizard games ever since. How's and then Harry Potter went downhill from there. Now, okay, in all fairness, uh, the Fantastic Beast did have some pretty cool effects. Going assholes, my name is Estellar J and the world is in desperate need of a good wizard game. It causes me immense physical pain to admit that Wizard 101 is probably the most mainstream wizard game ever released. Seriously, why is that? Well, if 19 years of watching shitty YouTube videos has taught me anything, it's that shitting on a greedy AAA studio is never a bad starting off point. Skyrim set the bar for wizard combat unfathomably low. The game features over 100 spells with a magic system as vast as an ocean and about as deep as a tweet from Jaden Smith. Not that I'm one to talk. There is no utilizing your environment, there are no spell interactions, and there are no combos. For destruction spells, you shoot fire, ice, or lightning in a straight line. There are only two kinds of wizard games. Wizard games with purple lightning and wizard games with yellow lightning. Do not let yourself- Yellow lightning all the way. It's so much superior. Cell phone to the purple lightning pipeline, yellow is clearly superior. Shouts can be categorized into the funny ragdoll shout and the rest of them. There are some interesting spells in this game, but they're all utility instead of combat centric. Why do wizard games fall flat? Number one, they need to have variety in their combat. Think about what made that Harry Potter fight so cool. They threw aside the formula and focused on something much more important. Presentation! Enter Dragon's Dogma. Ooh. Okay. Okay. This is hot. Dragon's Dogma has the best spells, visually at least. The way that they cast them, are you kidding me? It's so sexy. I can't wait for the second entry. It's coming up in one month and two days. I don't know what the fuck Dogma means, but it sounds extremely sexual. This game wins the fucking Nobel Peace Prize for having the coolest looking magic in any video game ever. Just look at the way the sorcerers cast spells, man. <laughs> I spent two years learning Japanese for that joke, please subscribe. Unfortunately- Look, if I hadn't made it pretty clear, this is not intentional, I swear to god. Weeb. Konosuba is fun. Only the mage class doesn't scale very well into the late game, and it's simply more worth your time to pick Ranger, which is coincidentally exactly the same as in Skyrim, where late game wizards are about as useful to the kingdom as YouTubers are to society. Number two, wizards should be powerful and I wow. should feel cool as fuck for being one. A wizard would destroy you in a fight. It's not an episode of anime, motherfucker. Wake the hell up. This fight is the highest level wizard duel we see in all of Harry Potter, and the sheer scale of everything is a huge part of what makes it so enjoyable. At first glance, it seems like Terraria has everything going for it. There's over 70 unique spells, a bunch of armor sets, and hordes of items to change up builds. It also scales extremely well with the other classes. Check it out, chat. I call this my gaydar. <laughs> Fuck, I just killed the bird! No! I actually consider this to be one of the better magic games out there, but its fatal flaw is that there's just not enough going on. For every single spell in the entire game, you just mouse one the enemy until it dies. Wizard combat should be more complex than fucking cookie clicker. <laughs> there's very little incentive to switch to other weapons to create combos because of my least favorite part of any wizard game, mana. The problem with mana bars- Dude, I, I just don't have the time 
but I would have wished that I could get into Terraria. I, I just think it's, it, it just takes too much time. Just simply too much time. That they incentivize players to use only their most powerful spells over and over again lest they risk wasting mana on a worse weapon. At most, you might switch to a secondary weapon for like one second to apply Icker or some other debuff before going right back to your main. I personally find cooldown based magic much more fun. Obviously, you're gonna have that one spell that hopelessly outclasses the rest, and obviously, you're gonna wanna use that spell over and over and over. But when it goes on cooldown, you're forced to adapt. You're forced to find creative ways to incorporate your other spells into a combo while you wait for your big cheese spell to refresh. Spellbreak okay. decided to mix the two. You can equip two of six gauntlets, each of which... Wait, seriously? Oh, Spellbreak. Do anybody remember this game? It lasted, what? Two, two and a half year? Came out in 2020, at least, least 2020. I got to play it a little bit. It's like a, a an online battle royale with spells instead of, like, conventional weapons. It was kind of fun, but it got boring pretty quick. And, well, yep, <laughs> given the fact that some of you might not know it is exactly why I died. It was good, it was a great concept. Like, there are many, actually many pretty good battle royales out there that never got the chance. They just didn't have the audience for it. This game was out for four years and you only thought of six spells? No fucking Wait, wait what? Didn't it come out in 2020? This game was out for... F oh, pre-alpha, okay, fine. Four years and you only thought of six spells? No fucking wonder they're shutting the servers down, you idiots. Each gauntlet you pick up has a primary attack and a special attack. The special attack has a cooldown and your primary attack shares a mana bar with your double jump. The cooldown on special moves is definitely better than linking them to the mana bar, but because you only get two spells, there's no real combos you can pull off. You can combine elements to create special effects, but most of them just equal extra damage. I think this game could have been a lot more fun if you picked each individual spell instead of having them packaged together by element. Keep the delay on primary attacks as it is, but lower their damage, add some spells with medium length cooldown, and then keep the specials exactly how they are. This would make fights significantly more complex and prevent people from getting bored. Also, tap into Fair. people's microphones and make the Wolfblood rune last longer if I howl at it. <laughs> oh, I see him, I see him. Number three, the magic system needs to be complex. The laser beam duels in Harry Potter are the equivalent of holding mouse one in your last prism in Terraria. They're boring because they're too simple. V versus D threw all of that out the mm. window and for a wizard game to be fun, sure. the exact same thing needs to happen. But is it possible for a wizard game to be too complex? Yes. Very much yes. The amount of spells and spell interactions in a wizard game is directly proportional to the amount of crack cocaine ingested during the development process. L let me guess. We have two options here. One is most likely going to be a game that has been recommended for me to play. No, Darkest Dungeon it doesn't have that. Noita? The, uh, the other Finnish game that people have been spamming uh, in the comment section? Fuck yeah. <laughs> this is the universal law of wizard games, and if it is to be believed, then we're going to need a fucking SWAT raid on Nala Games as soon as humanly possible because Noita is fucking insane. This is the only wizard game that I've played that actually lets you create your own weapons by mixing spells together. If Dude, I was- I, I, I've watched gameplay of this thing, and it is beautiful. The developers, I would add an Among Us spell. Appeal to younger audience. Check. As you play the game, you'll find their buy wands that let you equip different spells to them. Wait a minute, Joe. Your wand shoots and bursts before with a one second delay between them. Why? Okay, well that's because this particular wand has a cast delay of 0.22 seconds with a recharge time of one full second. You see, the cast delay is the time it takes for the wand to go from one spell to the next. It's low here, so it fires fast. The reason for the delay between shots is the recharge time, which is the time it takes for the wand to cycle from the last spell in the series back to the beginning. This wand also shuffles the order of your spells, which makes your wand inconsistent because you won't always be landing on your spell modifiers. A spell modifier is a special spell that changes the effect of whatever spell you slot directly to the right of it. It does not change the effect of the entire wand, as you would be forgiven for assuming based on the incredibly vague descriptions. There's also regular spells with modifier spells hooked in that activate after a certain amount of time or hitting an enemy or wall. Now, if that oh. sounds overly complex, convoluted, and confusing, that's it because is. it is. But it's okay because the game teaches you exactly none of that. Perfect. I mean, it's perfect. You, you need to learn the complexity of a complex game on your own. That's half the fun. It thins the herd. <laughs> Separates the, the plebs from the actual pros. Is this a fucking joke? I currently have about 10 hours in this game, and I can say with confidence oh yeah, we're getting that at least into, half uh, of that deep time I spent sitting in this dumbass temple between levels just figuring out how to make my wand half decent. And that's just the spell system! I haven't even scratched the surface of how confusing this game is. One time I spent literally 30 minutes figuring out a crazy luminous drill wand, and then I died in one shot because I stepped in some random fucking puddle that turned me into a sheep.
Are you kidding me? I am not here to give you my entire uncensored thoughts on Noita, but I think it's pretty hard to argue that this game couldn't benefit from a little bit of simplification. It is not a good sign when the first two YouTube results for Noita Beginner's Guide are an hour long. Here's a fucking flowchart that I found that explains the alchemy system in Noita. What the fuck am I even looking at? Unfortunately, unlike Harry Potter, I do not wish to spend eight years of my life learning how to cast magic. Like, would it fucking kill you to add a tutorial? Number four, the magic system needs to be accessible. These wizards didn't spend 30 minutes in a Naruto flashback theorizing about what spells to use. They just did it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the source of my frustration. It is no, it is literally that. Skill issues. God damn it. When you need a thesaurus to be able to cast a spell, then you know that you're doing it right. So hard to find a game that balances all of these elements. <laughs> oh, wait, I, what? I will fuck you up, whoever threw that. You ever been dive bomb before, asshole? It is not a pretty sight. The fuck even is this? Oh yeah, I forgot Wizard of Legend exists. Holy shit, he's a fucking firebender! Look at that rock move! Dude, I gotta try- I gotta use that one. Wizard of Legend is the coolest fucking magic game of all time and one of the best roguelikes I've ever played. You Never start by choosing four one. spells, a relic, and one type of drip. Remember when I tried to change Spellbreak's magic? Well, I was actually just describing this game's magic system word for word, and it was the greatest bamboozle in history. Ain't none of these spells clones of each other. Here's one that turns your fists into dragons. Here's one that makes you the Avatar. Here's one that makes you a Beyblade. Variety, check. Ooh. Just gonna check that one off too while I'm at it. I remember the first time I thought of a cool build idea. I unlocked this spell which lets you roleplay as everyone's favorite avatar character, the drill, and I realized, <laughs> hey, this drill hits like 15 times in one go. And then I realized, wait a minute, Dark Katana triples crit chance for melee attacks. And then I realized, hey, wait a minute, this robe increases my crit chance and damage. Oh, crit for days. There are so many synergies and ways to become overpowered as shit. You always get to start with four really good spells Holy to complement the rest Never of the Never heard of this game. But because of the randomized loot and cooldowns, you are forced to get creative with how you tackle enemies. And that level of unpredictable ability is also what makes it so satisfying when you do get a god run. Any spell that looks like dog shit can become broken as shit if you put enough thought into your build. Unless it's a summon, don't ever use those. Fuck you, I'm putting two check marks. <laughs> In Wizard of Legend, just casting a spell is enough to know exactly what it Dude, does. The complexity comes from the player's list. own ability to create combos, avoid damage, and make decisions, not from the magic system itself, which significantly lowers the skill floor while only slightly lowering the skill ceiling. <gasps> Yahtzee! Yahtzee! It is literally a perfect game. Until you die. Okay, perfect games don't exist, but basically what I'm saying with this video is that if you fuck up Hogwarts Legacy, I'm busting out the Chevy Silverado, and I'm driving it straight through your kitchen. Subscribe if you like Mills, follow me on Twitch if you got a big ass. <laughs> no, low accurate Virgil. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, this was from Stella J.